Well, hello friends. It's our first day of homeschooling and I thought I would bring you guys along for our back to school day. It was a few weeks ago, but I filmed this and wanted to share with you guys just a little bit about what it's like for me homeschooling as a single mom. And yep, I'm still in the boot <laughs> at this time of the vlog. You'll see later the improvements I've made. But I'm so happy to be back home in my house. It was such a blessing to stay with my parents, but also great to be home taking my vitamins, my seed probiotic. Then I've got my Costco fish oil that I try to take. I'm not always the best at vitamins, but I know they're very important. I also take the stress factors um, supplement that I actually think really does help with anxiety. So that's a good one. And lastly, I live in the Pacific Northwest, so I gotta have my vitamin D and some protein before we start homeschooling. <laughs> for starting up school today. We're just gonna do math and language. I've never done this before, just easing back into homeschooling, but I decided with my injury, I just didn't want to overdo it and overwhelm myself. So I'm taking it a little easier this year. And I think that this might be actually a good routine because getting back into doing school is a big adjustment. So why not make it a little easier for myself? So I'm showing you here the teacher's guide that is so helpful that comes with the curriculum I use, which is a Becca. This is what makes my life easier for homeschooling. So this is some of the third grade stuff. What I showed you before was Emma's sixth grade content. But I love that everything is detailed for me, what we need to do each day. And there's always so much information in the teacher's guide that I just have to pick and choose what we end up doing. But this has been a great fit for us for homeschooling. Hey guys, it's like a week, two weeks later from when I filmed that first part of the content sharing a little bit about the start of our homeschooling. And today is a Saturday. I am by myself. My kids are at their dad's and I thought I would have you come along with me while I do a few more things today, chat with you a little bit about an update on how my foot is doing and just bring you along to make a smoothie for lunch. I just finished editing a video that I have ready to go on my computer that has taken a lot of work <laughs> for, I don't know if it's going to go this week or the following week. I haven't even decided, but it's a review of a book that I read called The Jane Austen Diet. And it was such a good book. And I had to share with you guys the health tips, wellness tips that I learned from that book. So I'm putting it to rest now. I'm done. It's uploaded. It's ready to go. And now I'm going to stop and make some lunch. So let's make a smoothie. It is so nice to be back home. And if you didn't notice, I am standing. Yes, I am not having to use crutches and I can walk on my foot. But I'll after I get this smoothie made, I'll share with you guys the continued journey of healing because it's not over with. We've got a ways. I mean, I've got a ways to go, which was a little discouraging. I just didn't realize the timeline. But anyways, share more on that later. Let's make a smoothie today. I can't decide. So I have been using, um, it's in this bag, but Arbonne strawberry protein powder, and I really like it. I have a friend who sells Arbonne, and that's where I get it from. But um, I also bought on Amazon this brand called Truvani. And I ordered like their sample pack of different flavors. I've already tried a bunch of them. I'm not sure what I think about it, but I wanted to, to try this brand. They had some fun like different flavors. I tried like a chocolate peanut butter that was good, a peanut butter, just plain peanut butter that was good, a banana cinnamon, eh, not that great. So all I've left is vanilla chai, matcha, and unflavored of that. Or I can do strawberry. I think I'm going to make 
a matcha one. I, if I had a signature drink, it would be matcha. Like, what is your signature go-to drink? So ever since I gave up coffee, I started drinking tea, but then I just have loved matcha more and more, especially when I learned how to make it myself at home, healthier than when I used to get at Starbucks with all the sugar in it. Anyways, I love matcha flavor. And then recently when I saw on somebody's social media that I follow, she showed how to make a mint, an iced mint matcha. And I'm actually not gonna use fiber in it today. Sometimes I put fiber in my protein powders, but or I mean in my smoothies, but not today. Anyway, when I learned how to make a mint matcha, it's like, oh, it's so good, you guys. So let's try making a mint matcha with this matcha protein powder. as I was pouring it in and it kind of spilled and I even have extra. Okay, we gotta do a taste test now. Mm. Alrighty. I can taste the mint. I'm gonna say that my regular matchas that I do without the protein powder, like this with the mint um, is better than this one. It's a little more sweet, more protein powder-y sweet than it is matcha-y, but not bad. Like I would, would I drink this again? Yes, I would definitely drink it again because with my regular matchas, I'm not getting 20 grams of protein. And so this is actually not too bad. Let's go outside and I'll show you something exciting that I have on my deck. If you didn't see my Instagram post that I'm like so excited that I have, it was a dream to get this for my deck. So let's go outside. Ta-da! <laughs> my new outdoor couch that I'm so excited to have. It's something that I wanted to have for quite a while was like a nice place, comfy place to sit outside. And I'll share the cool story of how I got it. I had this table and these chairs for a while, but I just felt like all my stuff was kind of like a hodgepodge And now I feel like it's coming together a little bit in more of a cohesive style a bit. And yes, I already got some fall stuff out. My mom got me these. I asked her if when she went to the store, she would look for mums for me. And I like how that turned out. Cole, my son Cole bought me this a few years ago, so I bring it out every year. Here's another little view of the couch set up. We've got our fall little window stickers there. But yeah, okay, so you wanna, oh, and here over here is my daughter's little plant collection. She's into plants, excuse me, so much more than I am. <laughs> and uh, she loves them. That's her little workshop of plants. So the couch was a huge blessing when i was staying at my parents house the last um two months my parents and neighbors let us borrow this so i could sit on it and i could just easily put my foot up and that's where i filmed a lot of my videos you probably will notice on this couch at my parents house well they were trying my neighbor my parents neighbors were gonna sell it and i just said hey how much are you interested in selling it for i'm curious about buying it and they sold it to me like for 50 bucks which is so nice such a steal and i just i'm just excited to have a place to sit outside because i love my deck 
but it's hard when you don't have like a comfy place to sit. So now I do and I can put my foot up if I want to. And I, I just have to motivate myself to, to sit outside more because it's like a habit that I don't quite have, but it's so much, it's so easy here. I can just go right out on my deck to sit outside. So anyways, that is exciting news because I had looked so many times on Facebook marketplace and things like that. And then just God blessing me with the provision of this with my foot, you know, being injured, like being able to get it during this season of my life was just the perfect timing and just felt like a blessing, a gift from, from the Lord. So I'm very, very grateful. I want to show you guys, you probably saw a little bit, but how I'm doing at walking. So it's been a week, a little less than a week since I went back to my doctor and I got approved to be able to start walking without crutches and being able to put weight on my foot, which I wasn't able to do for the last two months. So he told me that when I go out, um, I have to walk with the boot on to keep the boot on. Like when I go out of my house, when I'm at home, he says I can wear just tennis shoes or, you know, slippers or whatever. So that's the new development, but I have a long ways to go with recovery, which I was naive thinking it wouldn't be that long, much longer that I'd have to wear the boot when I go out. And I went to physical therapy for the first time just yesterday. And I said, how much longer do you think I'll have to wear the boot? And she said six to eight weeks, unless your doctor says something different, which I do go back to my doctor in a month. So maybe he will say something different, but I was just like really surprised. I thought that I would get the boot off sooner and still have to do physical therapy for like six weeks, but be able to walk without the boot sooner. So I'm just realizing that this is a long, process of healing. I wanted to share with you guys things that I feel like the Lord is working on me during this season of waiting and trusting him. I feel like the best thing, well, not the best because there's been a number of great things, but one of the best things that came out of this season so far has been learning to slow down. When I first injured my foot, I felt like I did not want to just sit around Speaking of that, I'm going to put my foot up while I talk with you guys. I did not want to just sit around and just, um, I felt like I was like rotting away as I'm like sitting and waiting for the surgery and then sitting and waiting to recover. But then I got in the groove of resting, reading, watching movies, lots of Hallmark movies and just in, enjoying as best as I could more of that time. And it's funny because before all this happened, I felt like I was just craving a slower pace of life. I feel like that is my nature to have a slower pace, but as a single mom that works part-time, that homeschools, it's a lot. And so I felt like it's hard to have that. So this has just been a blessing that I've been able to be home with my kids. I've spent a lot of extra time with my parents when I was living with them for two months. And also I just had time to reflect with the Lord on habits that I wanted to change long-term. And one of them that I, I'll share a little bit about now and then probably more in future videos is learning to manage my social media time a lot better. And I don't mean just making videos and things like that. Like YouTube is really fun for me. And even watching YouTube videos is a fun pastime. It's more like Facebook and Instagram. And I felt like those were things that I really had a hard time. There's a plane going by. Why does this always happen when I'm filming a video? <laughs> plane, you're cute, but please, you're loud. Anyways, um, I felt like it was hard for me to manage my time with those things. I'd spend so much more time scrolling and looking at things and like posting Instagram stories than I wanted to do. And so I, I just have had this time to begin to reflect on what do I really want to do with that time? How do I want to manage my internet, social media time? And I still have a long ways to go, but it was just a really great time to start making better habits and, and to continue to grow and making better habits because I felt like social media time scrolling and all of that has not been helpful for my mental health but also just hasn't been helpful for me managing my time and most importantly I feel like it can be a barrier to my walk with God in the sense that if I'm checking my phone first thing in the morning and looking on social media then what kind of 
becomes lesser priority spending time with God. And I got to be honest, like that is not, that is not how I want to live my life, but it was how I was living my life. And so I've been trying to make it more of a priority to spend time with God before I browse on social media, because I know how that can just be a rabbit hole of time wasting. And I've also been trying not to post as many stories because the more things I post, the more I want to go on there and check stuff. And so just managing that even with like making YouTube shorts. I haven't really been making YouTube shorts because I just, I want to embrace this slower pace and I don't know what that's going to look like, excuse me, when I go back to work and things like that. But I'm just thankful for this time to, to be able to embrace slowness and hopefully build some good habits. So let me know if you are trying to work on your social media time. Is that something that you struggle with? Or maybe you found some great ways to manage your social media time let me know because i'll take all the tips from you guys <laughs> i didn't realize how much i just love well i knew how much i love the water but i think i it confirmed to me even more when i couldn't go and be around the water that i just love it i feel like i'm a i'm a ocean girl i just <laughs> love it it makes me happy it makes me feel peaceful and you know the story of this apartment and how god provided it i it was just beyond my dreams what god provided for me as a single mom thinking i would barely be able to afford anything and i've shared the story before of how i got this apartment it's through a family friend and they have offered me very affordable rent and never raised my rent and i'm just so so grateful so grateful and it was just been a wonderful place over the years i've been here for seven years for god for me to be in a place of healing like having a view of the ocean and to heal through my divorce and all of that is just such a gift it's just crazy i'm just reminded that god goes like above and beyond what we ask like and even with things that aren't that big of a deal, like the couch outside that I'm just so excited about, it's like God didn't have to do that. He didn't have to give me a couch, but he did. He He knew my heart's desire. And I think I probably even prayed about it because I know that it's okay to pray about those things. Like maybe God's going to say no, but he may say yes. And I don't know. God is so good. I just love him. I love him. So just had to share that. So another thing I wanted to share more of in this video, I showed you guys a little bit of our first day of homeschool. Not not very much because it's hard to film that while I'm doing homeschool stuff. And I've also decided that I'm not going to have my kids in videos, which I haven't really had them in that much anymore. But just they're getting older and just for privacy sake, I won't really have them in videos and even on my Instagram for my because my Instagram is public so that's kind of a bummer but I feel good about that decision as they get older but I want to show with show with you show you guys something I purchased on Amazon that I feel like will be helpful for me which I bought a planner before but I really like this planner so let me show you I've told you guys before but um organizing is not really my strength but having a planner is really nice. We'll see if I stick at it, but I love that you can write on here what you want to do during different times. And then you have like to do tasks and all sorts of different things that you can write like a notes. Hey, look at my, my ideas for this vlog. Anyways, you have like the top priority section to do tasks and follow up calls. Anyway, this was very affordable. The only thing I don't like is it shows fingerprints a lot, but it's very cute. You can wipe it off and I love the cognac color. So if you're trying to get organized like me for fall, even if you're not a homeschool mom, this is fun and I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. A little bit more about homeschooling. So we are doing like i showed a becca curriculum and that has been something that's just worked well for us it is more of an expensive curriculum but the way that i do it is i reuse the teaching stuff for my son that my daughter has gone through because they're um a few years apart and then i <laughs> this is how i afford it in all honesty is i usually use tax return money and i buy it at once and 
it's worth the investment. It's way more affordable than private Christian school. And then I, like I said, pass it down to my daughter and that's, that's how I make it work. So I don't have necessarily a lot of amazing, incredible tips for homeschooling. I, I feel like with me wanting to work on organization and all of that, like I, over the years, even though I've homeschooled for what, how many years now? Um, this is my seventh year now. I still am learning how to manage my time better because I'm working with two children that are doing two very different subjects. And my daughter that is older, she can do a lot on her own, but I still have to help her with some. So homeschooling is so such a gift, um, but it is time consuming. It is a lot of energy and time put into it. Now having the lesson plans all ready to go with Abeka is wonderful, but it is, it's how I spend a lot of my time and it can be stressful at times, but I love that I get to just live life with my kids and we get to learn together. We get to spend so much more time together. So that's what I love about it. I did have a question um, from Melinda. Hey, Melinda. Thank you for all your wonderful comments on my video. She asked me about how I manage chores for my kids. And that is a great question with homeschooling. Because again, in all honesty, with me not being super great with organization and structure per se. Like I'm not super laid back. Like I like to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, but I'm not super type A. So I'm like somewhere in between there, I guess. Mm. But I realized when I injured myself that I wasn't having the kids doing as much as they could helping around the house. I was having them help some, but it just with homeschooling, there's not a lot of time. And then when they're gone at their dad's, like that, that's time that they're gone, not with me, um, to work on stuff. And so with me being injured, I really, they really had to step up to the plate and help. And that's been so good. They, since I, even since I've gotten home, they help with laundry, they help with dishes and like things that they could have been doing before. And I'd have them help with some but not super consistently. So I think that's a good thing that has come out of this is for them to learn to be more helpful and to do things. And I hope I can keep that up. Okay, I wanna show you guys something else on a different note. So last spring, I think I thrifted this from the thrift store. It's kind of ugly, okay, but it's kind of cute. Look at this, it's a sweatshirt. I always wanted something that showed like a fall themed cutesy top and Usually they're kind of expensive, so thrifting this for a dollar, or was it a dollar fifty? I don't even know. Two dollars, whatever it was, was worth it. It was pretty balled up, and so I went to town and was very devoted with the sweater shaver so I could make it look a little bit more new. But I am ready, you guys. I am ready. It's fall, y'all. I know it's not the first day of fall. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little update video, sharing a little bit about homeschooling, about the healing of my foot, all of that, what God's teaching me. I am happy for this new season of being able to be back in my house and just trying to just take one day at a time. Hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.